guys, reversely, oh, that was so bad. I'll stop doing that next time around. Not never gonna be doing an intro. I was just really excited, guys. This time around, we're gonna be talking. My name is Reversal. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about Pokemon Go. More specifically, generation number two. Even more specifically, what is the best generation number two starter? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you guys are curious. I have a couple of facts lined up right here. Uh, I'm gonna try to break you down. Uh, I'm gonna try to break it down in the best of my ability. So let's just jump in. So we're first introduced with a grass type, which is the wonderful Chikorita, which I think is really strange if Chikorita was a female type. But then again, I should uh, was a male type. But then again, you know, I shouldn't really judge based on gender because Pokemon has always been really strange in that regard. Chikorita being <laughs> thus may be the worst uh, intro ever. Uh, Chikorita is a grass type, evolves into Bayleaf evolves into the mega awesome Meganium. I think it's awesome. By the way, a little fun fact here. Tangela right now in Pokemon Go is the only dedicated grass type, which means it's a single grass type. No, every other grass type in Pokemon Go is combined with something. Venusaur is combined with poison. Others are combined with grass, stuff like that. I think it's interesting. So Meganium, dedicated grass type. Next up, we got Cyndaquil, the fire type. Once again, Cyndaquil, a really cute Pokemon, evolving into Quilava. Quilava. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I think Quilava is the way to go. And then Typhlosion. Not Explosion, Typhlosion. Typhlosion is a really cool Pokemon. Love this one to bits and pieces. And then Totodile is the water type being introduced here. It's uh, once again a dedicated type. Every single Generation 2 starter is a dedicated type, which I think is really interesting because that wasn't the case in, in Generation number 1. Totodile right here, evolving into Crocona. Croc Crocona? Croc nah, Crocona. <laughs> and then Feraligator. Not alligator, but for alligator. I think these Pokemon are all, all really awesome. I still remember the moment Generation 2 was announced. We were like, what are these strange Pokemon? They looked so strange. Now look at this. The combination, the difference between Generation 1, 2, 3 to Generation 6. They are freaking light bulbs which have like little ice in them. Or chandeliers or stuff like that. Or ice creams which have ice in them. Which are considered Pokemon. In Generation 7 we're going to have sand castles with ice in them. But let's get back to business here. Uh, we're talking about the best Generation number 2 Pokemon out here. So let's combine these two. Uh, let's, let's put them next to each other. We're going to be starting off with Meganium here over here. The maximum CP is the lowest out of the three. With 2485. Um, I think that's partially due to... Do something with the fact that speed doesn't mean a thing. Uh, Meganium, I remember being the fastest Pokemon out of the three, uh, was pretty powerful because of that. Uh, in terms of health, it's gonna be the exact same as Venusaur, Golduck, and Victory Bell, 160 stamina. Attack is quite respectable with 182, and of course, a grass type usually has a higher defense at the same time as well. 218 is not that bad. Uh, I think Meganium is going to be getting the moves, and if you're watching this in the future, this might have changed, but I think the Meganium is getting the moves. Fine Whip, Razor Leaf, Solar Beam, and Petal Blizzard. And offensive wise, if you attack with the Pokemon, I think Razor Leaf and Solar Beam is going to be the best, but then defensive wise, it's going to be Fine Whip alongside with. Solar Beam Battle Blizzard. I, I think it would be Solar Beam would be better um, when it comes down to this. The next up we got Typhlosion. Typhlosion is gonna have a CP of 2600, um, 2602. 26, I'm on board. 2,602, to not confuse myself. The stamina is going to be the worst out of the three. It's going to be uh, four lower than Meganium. It's going to be the same as a Charizard, which is kind of interesting. Because Charizard is, of course, the generation number one starter out here. The attack is the best out of the three. And then defensive-wise, is the worst out of the three. Attack is 212. Defense is uh, 182. And this is something we see on Fire-type Pokemon as well quite often. So Typhlosion can get a couple of attacks as well. Quick Attack, Ember, Fire Blast, Flamethrower is I think the attacks that Typhlosion will be obtaining here. Um, in defense or in offense whenever attacking, Ember and Fire Blast would obviously be the best. And then defensive wise, I think Quick Attack would be better than Ember. And then Fire Blast as well as the, um, as the dealing damage attack. Moving on to Feraligate over here, it's a water type, uh, so once again, the highest CP out of the three, uh, quite interesting, 2678 is the CP, if you don't count in legendaries, it's gonna have the 8th 
highest CP inside of the game, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the stamina is the same as Hypno. Um, Threlegator has the highest stamina out of the three, but isn't considered a beast when it comes down to stamina here. It's 170, the same as Hypno. Attack and defense, uh, both in between the other two. Uh, it's both 200, which is very respectable. And then I think Relegator will be getting the moves uh, Water Gun, Bite, Aqua Till, Hydro Pump, and Scald. I think those are the five moves that uh, Relegator is able to obtain. And um, for attacking purposes, Water Gun and Hydro Pump will, de will, will be the best out there. And defensive-wise, inside of a gym, it will be Water Gun and Scald. That's what I feel. I could be wrong, it could also be Hydro Pump, but I think Scald will be attacking more unpredictably and people are just able to dodge Hydro Pump a little bit more often. Let's talk about typings here because that's very important. So Meganium is a Grass type. As a Grass type, it is weak against Fire, against Ice, against Poison, Flying and Bug types. Those are five types which are being used quite a bit. So in that regard, I think Meganium has a definite weakness there. However, it is also strong against a pretty interesting, uh, some in pretty interesting types as well. It is resistant against ground types, water types, grass types, and electric types, which I think all of them are pretty decent uh, typings to be resistant against so definitely a, a great benefit there and then whenever Meganium will be attacking it will be strong against water ground and rock and that I think is interesting because rock was not included against the resistant part of this um, Meganium is uh, comparable to a Venusaur but Meganium is not a poison type so I think that Meganium will be more powerful than Venusaur because of this alone but alongside with that, I think that um, if you if you take a grass type, a single grass type, Meganium will be the, the one Pokemon to go for. Because it's just an only grass type, it's the, the best only grass type that will be in the game for well until generation number 3. I have no idea what generation number 3 holds, I'm not looking into that right now. But for now, best dedicated grass type, Meganium hands down. For that, So for that reason alone, if you're looking for something like that, Meganium is your go-to Pokemon. Moving on to Typhlosion, the typings. Um, Typhlosion is a, is a fire type, so just to remind you guys quickly, weak to water type, ground type, and rock type. Um, it's going to be resistant against fire, because it's its own typing. Grass types, which is uh, strong against, you know, Meganium. Ice types, bug types, steel types, which I want to talk about a little bit later as well. And fire types. A fairy type, sorry, fairy types, and then super effective, if you use fire attacks, it's going to be strong against ice, grass, bug, and steel. Now, steel was a typing introduced mainly in generation number two at the, at the regular game, right? And the reason why they introduced the steel type is... In generation number one, normal types and psychic types were pretty dominant with Snorlax, uh, we had uh, we had Gengar, Alakazam, even though Gengar is not a uh, psychic type. Uh, we had Alakazam, which is uh, pretty pow uh, powerful. We had Mewtwo, really powerful Pokemon in generation number one. So that's part of the reason why Steel got introduced over here. Now Steel is really awesome on defense, has the least amount of resistances out there, um, has the most resistances, sorry, is, is strongest against most Pokemon on defense. So um, Cyndaquil or Typhlosion being strong against Steel really plays a factor in um, Fire becoming better in the generation 2 meta in Pokemon Go. So that's definitely something to take into consideration. When it comes down to Typhlosion as a Pokemon individually, it's very comparable to Flareon with the same types of movesets out there. Um, it's it's better in defense than Flareon is because of the more health and, and defense. Uh, no, not defense, uh, more health for sure. And then it's going to be a worse attacker than Flareon because Flareon is just a beast whenever it comes down to attacking, but it's relatively slow as all fire types pretty much are. But but then Arcanine still is going to be kicking ass here. So Arcanine is going to be the strongest fire type um, out of these three Pokemon out there, okay? So moving on to the fierce Feraligator here. Feraligator is uh, a water type. And water is weak against grass and electric. Those, really, the only two types it's weak against. But pretty established typings. I mean, we're seeing those typings all over the place. Electric and then uh, grass. Hopefully electric is gonna make an uprise in second generation, which it will do. I'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, resistant against fire, water, ice, and steel. 
and then super effective whenever you're using water attacks against fire, ground and rock types. That's not a whole lot of typings it is effective against. So with the introduction of generation number two, there's a number of Pokemon that people are really excited for. Like there's 10 Pokemon that I just got lined up here, which people are really uh, excited for. And these Pokemon are Tyranitar, which is a rock and a dark type. It's basically the Dragonite of generation number two. That's how you can consider Tyranitar. It's gonna also defeat Dragonite, which we'll uh, talk about in a different video. Scizor is going to be the evolution of Scytor. Scizor is gonna be slower than Scytor, and because of the speed decrease that uh, Scizor is gonna be getting, it will also get more attack or defense. And it's a bug and a steel type. Now, I already talked about bug. Really powerful typing here. Steelix is the same story. It's going to be getting the Steel type and it will be a Ground type. Evolved form of Onyx, but it's going to be really bulky on defense. So you definitely want to see this one inside of a gym. Ampharos is the Electric type I wanted to talk about. So Ampharos isn't really fast in, in, in the Pokemon series, but it's going to be such a beast. And the first ever dedicated Electric type in, in Pokemon Go that's really going to be doing a dent into the water meta. I expect a lot of people to be willing to go for Ampharos only for the fact that Electric is something that we're really lacking in in the current meta. So Ampharos is going to be a great thing. And for the same reason, people are going to be liking Meganium as well. So those are some of the things you want to be taking into consideration to kind of counter the water uh, meta that's currently ongoing. We got Kendra actually contributing to the water meta over here. It's a water type alongside with dragon type, which is a very interesting combo. Crobat is kind of a, a hit or miss. Crobat is a Pokemon that a lot of people like for the speed, for the mean look, and for the confusion ray. And all those three things are not present within Pokemon Go, which really sucks because of that Crobat's not going to be a great Pokemon, but it's still going to be a Pokemon a lot of people are going to be liking to get. Umbreon is an Eevee evolution. Same thing with Espeon. Umbreon's going to be a dark type. Espeon is going to be a psychic type. Umbreon's going to be really powerful, by the way, just letting you guys know. Then we got Slowking. Slowking, another Pokemon that a lot of people like in generation number two, but it's basically a copy of Slowbro. It's gonna, it's gonna be, in Pokemon Go, gonna have the exact same stats as Slowbro does. Then, the last one, Azumarill. Azumarill is also a Pokemon that's gonna be doing really, really well inside of gyms. It's a water type and fairy types. So what we're seeing in the, in the 10 Pokemon that people are excited for, you can also add Skarmory or Fortress. You know, those are two Pokemon which are Steel types. You don't see fire types in the, the, the Pokemon that people are most excited for. And you do see a bunch of steel types, but you see also a bunch of water types. So for that reason, I would like to say against steel types, Typhlosion would be really awesome. But that's just based on one typing. There's still the water meta we got to take into consideration. So pretty much it is between Feraligator and Meganium. And simply because of this, I feel that Feraligator will still be the best generation number two Pokemon. And then simply due to the fact that Meganium has five typings that Meganium is weak against. You got the fire type, you got the ice type, poison type, flying type, bug type. Those are five typings that, well, four typings you actually see quite a lot. You don't see a whole lot of uh, ice out there, but poison is out there. Flying is definitely out there. Bug types are out there. F fire types are also out there. And then Crocona or Feraligator is weak against grass and electric types, which are the, the types that, which are definitely there. But not a whole lot of people have trained up like electric types to the point where they're really powerful and really run inside of the meta. Because the issue with electric type is simply the fact that electric is mostly based around speed and it doesn't do a thing in generation number two. Now, if Pokemon would be a little bit different, I would say Typhlosion would be your best bet or Meganium. But in this particular case, based on how Pokemon Go works, it has to be for Relegator, the best Pokemon uh, starter in generation number two. Of course, we can all agree to disagree. I want to know from you guys in the comment section down below, what is your favorite generation number two Pokemon? for Pokemon Go, and what starter do you think is going to be the best in your personal opinion? And if you think I'm wrong in any way, shape or form, then make sure you share that with us in the comment section down below. To be honest, I, I, I'm not sure, like I don't like it that Electric is so undervalued. Hopefully Ampharos is gonna be a Pokemon we can all obtain and we can do something against. I think an increased rate in Ampharos is gonna make 
the game a lot more fun when it comes down to the gym meta at least. There's going to be a lot of things happening during generation number two. A lot of Pokemon which are going to be introduced which are very very interesting uh, for the way things are. I think Typhlosion is definitely going to be playing a big role. Uh, when it comes down to the fire typings because to be fair it's it's a starter so people will automatically like it as well but it's not a bad pokemon as well neither of these pokemon are bad but just with the current meta for relegator is obviously the best because electric isn't really there and then there's only grass types to worry so definitely train up your meganium to to counter the for relegator but then train up your typhlosions against the steel types and the meganium and then maybe try to train up for relegator against typhlosion because you know it all works in a vicious circle. Anyway, that's going to be doing it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the format of this video and me showing you all of this stuff. Uh, I'll try to do more videos like these if you guys desire to get more of these. I actually have one in the works for a while already. But uh, we'll get into that in a different video. For now, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And this has been Reverse for Pokemon Go. I'm going to be signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.